you don't have a Bible, you can share with someone sitting next to you, and then if uh, you want to look on the screen, you can. Maybe one day we'll just shut off the screen and, and make you have your Bibles, the Word of God, with you. <laughs> Amen. Acts chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. And in those days, Luke wrote, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in daily ministration, in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look, at, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to, to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. They, then and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of the Lord increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Today I will be ministering on the subject, Growing Pains. Simply, Growing Pains. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for the spirit that we feel in this place. Lord, we pray that as we begin to do the will of God and the work of God in the way that you have chosen, we ask that, God, you'll just take control of every spirit, every soul in this place. Knit us together as one. Even, Lord God, you want us to be as one as you were one with God. Lord, while you walked this earth, Lord God, there was something about the spirit and the flesh that kind of united in a way that you said it's all one. You said in that same fashion, you want us to be one with each other and one with you. We ask in Jesus' name that, Lord, you would be begin to unleash your spirit in here to drive out every unclean spirit uh, that wants to come in and observe. Uh, they don't even have the right to observe. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we drive them out by the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, and we invite your spirit just to have free recourse, because where the spirit of the Lord is, uh, there is liberty. Give liberty and freedom uh, in this place uh, from all obstacles and anything uh, that gets in our way. Lord, uh, you have given us power over all the works of the enemy, and we will exercise that power by the spoken word and in the name of Jesus as we preach it, teach it, as we disseminate it, Lord, as we get it down on the inside, we will begin to regurgitate it and give it to other folks. In the name of Jesus, let your glory flow. Let your anointing flow. God bless us here today in Jesus' name. Can you say in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. One more time, go ahead and put your hands together for the Lord. Go on and praise him. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. We give you the glory. We give you all the praise. Uh, we thank you for everything you're doing uh, in this place. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all the things, the good gifts, the good gifts, uh, Lord, that come down from the Father of lights. Uh, oh, yeah, we praise you, Lord, uh, and we honor your holy name. Uh, let our children praise you. Let our young people praise you. Lord, let everything that had breath praise you, Lord. Uh, we're going to enter your gates with thanksgiving uh, and then to the inner courts uh, with praise. Uh, oh, we thank you Jesus and we honor you right now we give you glory we give you glory we give you glory hallelujah amen God bless you, you may be seated thank you for standing so long growing pains how many have ever heard that term growing pains according to one medical study growing pains are cramping achy muscles that some preschoolers and preteens feel in both legs. The pain usually occurs in late afternoon or evenings, but it may cause your child to wake up in the middle of the night. Despite the name growing pains, there is no evidence or firm evidence found that growing pains are linked to growth spurts. Instead, growing pains may simply be muscle aches due to intense childhood activities that can wear your child's muscles out. 
These activities include running, jumping, and climbing. Growing pains seem to be more common after a kid has a particularly full day of sports. In general, growing pains are felt in both legs, especially in the front of the thighs and back of the legs or calves or behind the knees. Studies suggest that children who have growing pains may be more sensitive to pain. Children who have growing pains are more likely to have headaches and abdominal pain. This is what I have gleaned from this medical report. That growing pains are linked to intense human activity, which in, which in turn affects the muscles that are in the developmental stages. Growing pains are not usually felt while a person is active, but rather during times of inactivity. Finally, growing pains can affect us physically, mentally, and spiritually. Can somebody say amen? Amen. We're talking about something, and I, I know growing up, I, I'd heard the term growing pains and how that we have growing pains because your joints are, are separating or because you're growing up, but really all medical doctors, I've read a few and just gave you one, but they say that it's not linked to that as growing, but what happens is when you get into activity and you are growing and you're in a certain age group uh, in that activity and because of intense activity, you might feel pains in certain parts of your muscles, uh, those muscles that are undeveloped and that are trying to grow. The church is in a place where it's a muscle of God and it's trying to grow and trying to expand and trying to mature. But in the process of us growing and maturing and becoming strong, we're going to experience growing pains. Not because of the growth, but it is because of the growth. There's something about what God is doing in Lighthouse of the Valley that you need to understand. There's a lot of stuff going on, but God is saying you may be experiencing growing pains. In verse 1 of our scripture text, notice that there was intense activity going on in the first century church that resulted in growing pains. It says, in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring. Everybody say a murmuring. How many have ever murmured in here? The rest of you are lying. <laughs> You murmured. You either murmured with your parents or murmured with the pastor or murmured with your spouse or murmured with your friends, but murmured. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in daily ministration. In other words, the distribution of the daily food that they were getting. What was the cause? And this is my question I want to deal with first of all. What was the cause and effect of growing pains? What was the cause and effect of growing pains? Number one, the cause of growing pains was the multiplication of the disciples. The cause of the growing pains was because of the multiplication of the disciples. In verse 1a of our scripture text, it says the number of the disciples was multiplied. Everybody say multiplied. Because of the multiplication and because of the growth, there came in growing pains uh, and then there's all kinds of stuff that began to happen in the early church. This seemed to be a far cry from Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. I'm reading from the New Living Translation where Luke records, uh, those who believed at the beginning, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and notice, and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching uh, and to fellowship and, notice, and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all. A little bit stark contrast as to what was going in on in Acts chapter 6. Uh, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. Uh, and all the believers met together in one place and notice, and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions uh, and shared the money with those in need. Uh, they worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes uh, for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while praising God and enjoying the will, the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. The big difference between Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 6 was the church went from addition to multiplication. 
when they were adding, there weren't that many problems. And all this love was going on. But then as it began to multiply, then the problems began to come in. Keep in mind, as long as the church remains in addition mode, there will tend to be less growing pains. But once the church begins to multiply, growing pains are inevitable because of the increasing needs and the intense activity. In other words, the more we grow and the more we multiply, there's going to come with it some challenges that we will have in Lighthouse of the Valley. But don't think it's strange concerning these trials. Uh, don't think it's strange uh, concerning these tests. Uh, they're to try you to see what sorts on the inside. Uh, they're to produce patience uh, on the inside of you. They're to develop faith uh, and the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, God wants us to grow uh, and he has to multiply us. Uh, but as he multiplies us, uh, you've got to understand uh, we're going to experience growing pains. In other words, the body is going to sometimes hurt. And you and I are part of the body. Jesus is the head. We are the body. And when we understand all the members of the body, they make up one body. But there's not one person in here that makes up the sum total of the body. But all of us together make up the sum total of the body. And all of us together can do things uh, that this world has never seen. Uh, But as we begin to multiply and as we begin to do the will of God, as the body gets in action uh, and more activity goes on around us, as we get our calisthenics on uh, in the spirit as we begin to work for God and plant and grow and do all the things that God is saying we're going to experience growing pains the body's going to start hurting because of the intense activity number two the effect we know what the cause is but the effect of growing pains was the discord in the body of Christ Luke records in verse one of our scripture text in the latter part There arose a murmuring, everybody say a murmur, of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Never forget that when the church begins to multiply, there will be those who will feel neglected and rightly so, I might add. There will always be, as we begin to multiply, those within the body that will feel neglected. uh, And don't get mad at them because they're feeling neglected. Uh, It's probably a true neglect. Because that is the result of growing pains. Now you can live in denial or you can live with all kind of condemnation uh, and you can cast darts at folks uh, and say this or that, whatever you want, uh, but you've got to be able to acknowledge it, uh, that we're having growing pains uh, and with it uh, there comes this pain on the body and some people are going to be neglected. The cause of it is the body will begin to suffer and have discord. And sometimes you wonder why you're having faction and Paul was looking at a church in Corinthians that they had all kinds of gifts of the spirit they had all kinds of power and miracles signs and wonders among them and yet they were still carnal and they had discord in the body because the church was growing exponentially and it was just just without measure just beginning to move forward and outward and they began to suffer and folks got neglected the twofold answer for growing pains is this number one To acknowledge the cause and effect of growing pains. Don't live in denial. To acknowledge the cause and effect of growing pains. Look at verse 2 of our scripture text in the first part. Then the twelve. Everybody say the twelve. These are the apostles. The twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. In other words, we shouldn't start a food program just because this is going on. In other words, it was important for the disciples to recognize that there was a problem that needed to be addressed. It's important that the leadership understand that there's a problem that needs to be addressed because of growing pains. What we did in Sierra Vista will not, didn't work at Main Street. What we did at Main Street didn't work uh, when we went to Pinella Park. Uh, what happened at Pinella Park and what we did at Pinella Park cannot work what's he- right here in Sutter Street. Uh, because, growing, because of growing pains, uh, we have experienced some hurt. Uh, we've experienced some neglect. Uh, we've experienced some pain in the body of Christ. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, it's because of growing pains uh, that God, it's to tell you that you're growing uh, and you're multiplying uh, and you're going forward. Uh, it's a good thing, uh, but don't neglect it and don't act like it doesn't exist. It's a reality and it must be acknowledged. 
The following are two barriers that contributed to their growing pains. A, their cultural barriers contributed to their growing pains. Again, in verse 1 of our scripture text, uh, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. There were two factions at play here. And the Grecians, the Greeks that are in the church now, began to murmur against the Hebrews. Now, the Grecians were Jews of the dispersion when they were scattered who had been born and reared in the Grecian countries and who spoke the Greek language. The Hebrews were Jews who were natives of Palestine and spoke the Hebrew language of their day. Notice that both groups were Jews, both groups were Christians, yet both groups defaulted to their carnal roots when the pressure was on. When growing pains began, they defected and defaulted to their carnal roots. The Apostle Paul addressed this issue in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 through 28, when he said, For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, the natural response uh, when growing pains begin to, to happen, uh, the natural response uh, when you start feeling a little hurt uh, in the church, uh, the natural response uh, when you start feeling like you're neglected uh, in the body of Christ, uh, you automatically start to default uh, into your cultural upbringing, uh, whether whatever that may be. Uh, and that is not a good thing. Uh, that's not what God wanted. Uh, he came to diffuse all that, uh, to break all that up, to, to let you know that's not what defines you. Uh, what defines you uh, is those that are persecuting you. Uh, the, what defines you are those uh, that you're going through with uh, and hurting with you. Uh, what defines you is the body of Christ uh, and Jesus Christ being the head uh, and now you're the body. What defines you is the church uh, and somebody needs to understand uh, that I may be hurting right now and I may be going through right now but I'm not going to default uh, to my cultural upbringing for safety. And security. It's important. The second part of the twofold answer for growing pains is to reorganize for maximum growth. To reorganize for maximum growth. It was time to expand their leadership. It was time for them to grow, but growth isn't just natural, okay? I mean, it is natural, but it isn't. You have to facilitate the growth. You have to cultivate the growth. You've got to allow it to grow healthy. And that's really what you want. You don't just want growth in wild dandelions. <laughs> what, you, what you want is healthy growth. And what you planted, that's what you want to sprout. Can you say Amen. So they had to reorganize for maximum growth. The apostle said in verses 3 through 6 of our scripture text, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we, the apostles, will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The apostle said, what we're going to do is we're going to select men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and everything. Thing. We want to pull those guys, extract them from the body, and we want to appo appoint them over this matter. Why? So we don't stop doing uh, what we're supposed to be doing uh, and neglect the jobs and the, and the things that need to get done around here in the spiritual realm uh, and in the leadership of the church uh, just so that we can do something uh, not of lesser value, something that's very important, uh, but we can't do it all. Somebody needs to say that. Uh, the leadership can't do it all. 
The body is supposed to get together and reorganize. And this is what the Lord is trying to do right here. He's trying to restructure, reorganize, get us into a place that we will be able to get the maximum growth out of what he wants. We're not trying to grow larger than anyone. We're not trying to compete with anyone. We just want to get the full measure of what the Lord has inside. How many are just tired of being mediocre in your own spirit? How many want to raise and rise up to the, the, the stature that God has created you to be? If you want it to stand to your feet and begin to praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What needs to happen is you need to stop measuring yourselves among yourselves because that it not is not wise. But you need to look and do an introspection and start looking on the inside of you and not start looking over here and looking over there and looking over this and over that. You need to start looking within yourself and say, God, you created me for something and you brought me to Lighthouse of the Valley for a time such as this. Let's do this. We are experiencing growing pains. You may be seated. He said we have to give ourselves to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. Verse 5. And they chose Steph, Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And Philip and Prochorus and Nicor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of, Ju of, a proselyte of Antioch whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. The qualifications were there. And, and see, this whole time as you come in the church, and you may be new to Lighthouse of the Valley, the whole time uh, you should be filled with the Holy Ghost. This whole time uh, you should learn to be faithful. This whole time uh, you should be a woman or a man of honest report. Uh, this whole time uh, the people should be able to lay hands on you and say, go and lead us. Uh, you don't know who you have sitting in the pew next to you. You don't know what child uh, is going to lead this church. Uh, you don't know who's going to, God's going to raise up uh, to go into the foreign field. Uh, you don't know who's in here right now that's going to turn this world right side up. Uh, mom, dad, grandmoms, uh, and those of you that are caretakers, uh, you need to start praising God uh, and praying your children through and say, you may be the next one that God's going to use. It's not a one-man show. Jet Witherspoon Spoon Tool wrote, organization means systematic teamwork. Concerning the business of preaching the gospel and evangelizing the world, God must supply the spiritual food, but the teamwork. Everybody say the teamwork. The teamwork, the teamwork of an organized church is necessary to distribute it. God will supply the food, but it's up to us to distribute the food. When he fed the 5,000 and he fed the 4,000, he said, bring me what you have. And they brought the little lunch, boys lunch. Many of you know that story. And God had to do the supernatural thing of multiplying the food. But then there was that organizing and the reorganizing of the people because they were harassed. They were tired. They were scattered. And they were wanted, the apostles wanted them to go back into the city and they wanted them to get victuals and get some food. He said, no, let them sit right where they're at. And I want you to divide them up into fifties and into hundreds. I want you to organize them. I want you to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do my job of multiplying the food. I'm going to do my job as God as multiplying what you gave me but once I multiplied it I'm going to give it back to you and I want you to go distribute it to the people God is going to raise some of you up to distribute the word of God the miracles of God signs and wonders to the people but you've got to let God do his work on the inside and let him give it to you but once you become everything he wants you to be he's going to say go go and distribute what I gave you. In verse 7 of our scripture text, it gives the result of properly handling, handling growth pains because of multiplication, because of busyness, because of activity. When they selected men and put them over this matter and Prayed over them, prayed over them. You read the story, you see they got persecuted. <laughs> Stephen got killed. First martyr got stoned to death. 
stuff started happening, but it was the will of God. Notice in verse 7, it says, the word of God increased. Growing pains, if properly handled, if acknowledged correctly, if dealt with in the right way, of understanding what's going on, growing pains can cause us to reorganize in such a way that the word of God that's in you will begin to increase, not diminish, but begin to increase. If we do not address it, what will happen is the body will begin to self-absorb. The body will be like a cancer that will begin to eat at itself. The body will begin to turn on itself. The body will be like a rogue cell that tries to take over all the other cells in the body until it's consumed every lively and good cell. God has given us great things and to whom much is given, much is required. And because we are experiencing growth pains and growing pains. The Lord is saying we've got to do things different than the way we've done it thus far. We've got to go to greater heights and greater things that the word of God may be disseminated. Increased. Notice the second thing that happened. That happened. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. So here's my point. If you'll listen to pastor, I'm not saying listen to me and drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> That's foolishness. If I bring out some Kool-Aid, start do the million dollar man, six million dollar man. That's what it is. <laughs> the bionic woman. But I'm talking about listen as we Take this journey together through the word of God. Developing hunger and desire for the things of God. Hunger, desire for righteousness and living right in right standing with the Lord. Coming and saying, Lord, I'm excited when it's time to come into the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, begin to become biblical rather than carnal. The carnal man wants to default because of pain and because of hurt and because of neglect and because of disappointment. I hear you. I acknowledge that. But we cannot remain there. If we stay there, we die. But if we want to go forward, we reorganize. And we say, Lord, build us as a great man. Let bone come to bone. Let sinew come on. Let flesh come on there. Let bone come to bone. Let us stand up like a great army and do what you call us to do in our city. Multiply. I know we've been multiplying, but there's much more that God wants to do to Lighthouse of the Valley. Oh, Jesus. Give us your word, oh Lord. Help us to disseminate it, give it out, distribute it. In conclusion, let me just say, at Lighthouse of the Valley, we are experiencing growing pains. We are a very busy and active church. And we have moved from addition to multiplication over the years. But my wife and I believe it is time to acknowledge that there are some people that have been slipping through the cracks, leaving through the back door, or simply put, being neglected of their daily distribution of care. Therefore, we have been praying and asking God for direction. And this Wednesday, everybody say this Wednesday. We will begin the process of readjusting our church for maximum evangelism, true discipleship, and care ministry. That's where we're going. I've asked... Former missionary, 
Brother Soans, he's now pastoring in Fresno. He's been on the field for many, many years. We've been praying about him in particular. And we had a meeting, and I mentioned it last week. And I bumped into him at camp meeting, and I felt it was just the time. And we asked him to come in and assess and come in and look. He's done a great work in Spain, Madrid. But just come in and assess and help us walk through this process. I like the way he's doing it. I like the, what he has to say. And to take us through this process. Because where we need to go, we've got to see it from a different perspective. And so it's going to take, everybody say, it's me. It's, me. it's going to take you. It's going to take me. It's going to take all of us coming together and hearing and then taking it and applying. It's not going to be a one message. It's not going to be just one meeting. Commit yourself to coming on Wednesdays for a while. And say, Lord, I need to get what the church is laying down. I need to be where I need to be. I need to do what you've called me to do. We're going to try and equip you and give you the tools that's necessary to get this church and your family and you as an individual where God wants you to be. We want to disciple properly. We want to care properly. These are some areas uh, that God wants us to grow in and be able to do more effectively, effectively so that we'll be able to affect our world uh, and change this world uh, system in which we live uh, and mainly the community in which we live. I know you want to see your family members saved. I know you want to see your children saved. I know you want to see your community saved. I know you want to do better than you do. I already know all that. But guess what? We're having growing pains because of our activity, because of what we've been doing, because of the fight we've been in. But it's not over. Say it's not over. It's just beginning. I remind you of what the Lord spoke to me and I preached a message a couple of months or a few months back when he spoke to me about this church and about me in particular. In my prayer time in the morning, I was praying and, and I realized that and I told the Lord, you know, I've been serving you a while and pastoring this church now at that time, 21 years. And I said, uh, just talking to God. And I realized that I had been serving God in ministry. I mean, serving God totally at the time of 30 years. And the Lord spoke to me while I, I said that to him. And he said, don't you know that I was 30 years old when I started ministry? Yes. And so I looked in the Bible, turned to where it was, and I read it and it says he began. Then Jesus began after he was baptized and everything. Then he began his ministry. I said, yeah. And he told me. You're just beginning. Now you're ready. I'm thinking, Lord, I'm going towards the end. He's like, now you're ready. See, the accumulation of things that we've been through and felt and, and all the storms that we've been through and all the things we've had to endure, that God is just saying, I'm preparing you uh, for what I have for you. Uh, and some of you have dreams and visions and God has spoken to you and you think, oh, it's not coming to pass. No, it's coming to pass. Uh, but he's been creating something in you. He's been building you. Uh, he's been getting you ready. But it's time to start walking in that. Uh, but now, I'm here to tell you, now is the time. Uh, this is the moment. Uh, now we're getting ready to enter in. Uh, but we've got to reorganize. Organize. We have to reorganize so that we don't have the slipping and the cracks and the hurts. We'll always have some of that, but we will minimize it. Can you say in Jesus' name? If you can stand to your feet, go ahead and stand to your feet with me. And here's how I'd like to end it today. If you're willing to walk with us in this process and help Lighthouse, the kingdom of God, reach its full potential, I want you to come stand with me at this altar. If you don't want to, that's fine. Just come stand with me at this altar. Growing pains. Growing pains. Even if you're hurting right now, I just identify why you're hurting. Growing pains. If appropriate, I'd just like you to 
Lay your hands on the person next to you. Ladies with ladies and men with men. Unless it's your spouse or your children or someone like that. Just lay your hand on their shoulder. Touch them on the shoulder. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray for them. Lay your hands on them. Lay your hands on them. You're going to pray for them. Pray to God's hand would be on them. Begin to pray for them right now that God would do his work in them. Pray an anointing on their family. Pray an anointing in their homes. Pray an anointing on their marriage. Pray an anointing on everything they do, everywhere they go, every dream they have. Pray an anointing on them right now. That's it. Pray for them. Pray that God will anoint them beyond measure. God will begin to give them every vision, every dream that they've ever thought of, everything that they've ever prayed in secret. Let it come to pass. Pray an anointing on them right now. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray for them. God's going to release something. Listen, listen. God's going to release something inside of them as you begin to pray for them. The body is going to begin to heal the body. The body is going to begin to minister to the body. The body is going to release something today that you didn't even know was going to happen. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, it's been in their dreams, uh, but it's in their DNA. Uh, that's it. Begin to pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them right now that God will answer all of their prayers. Uh, if they need healing uh, in their body, pray that that God would give them healing. If they need deliverance in their mind, pray that God would give them deliverance in their mind. If they need an answer to prayer in some secret thing, pray that God would give it to them right now in the name of Jesus. That's it. Keep on praying. Lay your hands on their shoulder and pray for them like you don't have any sense because God is going to do the work. He's going to unify them. Pray that God would give them unity in the body. Pray that they will not have disunity and discord in the body. Pray that God would heal their emotions uh, and pray that God would heal their inner man, uh, their spirit uh, in the name of Jesus. Pray healing uh, in their spirit. Uh, pray healing uh, in their mind. Uh, pray healing uh, in their emotions. Uh, let them be free in the name of Jesus. Uh, pray that they would be loosed uh, from all the clutches uh, of the enemy. Pray over them right now because God is going to loose them uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, loosing uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Pray over them. Weep over them. Pray earnestly over them. Pray that God would allow them to fall into line with the measure of the Holy Ghost and be led of the Spirit. To be led of the Spirit. Pray that their children would be blessed and their children's children would be blessed. Pray for their posterity. Pray right now that God would show them and open their eyes to truth, to understanding the Word of God. Pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost. Pray that their light will begin to shine and others will be drawn to Jesus and they would come to the Lord. Pray that an evangelistic spirit would be upon them. Pray that they'd be willing to be teach, taught and they would be teachable. Pray that God would give them the spirit of teachableness. Pray that God would give them the ability to teach others and disciple as well in the name Jesus! Yes! Pray, pray, pray! This is where the Lord is leading you in the prayer, in the intercession, in the praying on behalf of others. And God is going to do the work in you. He's going to help you as well as they pray for you and you pray for them. And God is going to begin to minister. It's going to be transferred. 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 Oh, yeah!